is up guys, welcome to the video. Today, the GTR is getting a little bit of love. We are on our way to McGuire's headquarters, and this GTR is about to be looking really, really good. So I'll update you guys once we actually get to McGuire's. We have finally made it to Meguiar's. We're in the garage now. So I guess if you guys can probably guess, we are fully detailing and restoring the GTR's paint. You guys have seen, you have told me that this GTR needs a little bit of love on the paint. That's exactly what's going down today. All these swirl marks and just ugliness of this black paint is about to get demolished and it's gonna look perfect. I'm excited. What exactly are we doing today, guys? Right here, we're just, well, you just rolled in from San Diego. So it's <laughs> like got dust, road debris, yeah. road grime. So the first thing to do is get all that loose stuff off of there because we're gonna inspect it, determine what we need to do next, and of course go to our go-to, Waterless Washing Wax, because we don't need to do a hose right now, it's not quite that dirty, yeah. but let's get rid of just the film. Oh, I'm so excited for this. <laughs> Having this car with like a nice, shiny painting. I even remember or know the last time this car has ever been detailed, so having this thing like spotless is gonna be such a good feeling. The next thing is we're just gonna evaluate the paint. Um, we're gonna work on that first because that's usually what you see and what a lot of people notice first is the paint in the right. wheels. So we're gonna do a two-step procedure where first we're gonna inspect it with our hands and feel for anything that you can hear a lot of that's probably fallout, overspray. And that's just literally stuck to the paint because we wiped it down and right. it didn't come off. So we gotta remove that first. And then the second part of that is looking for the below surface things. And we got ourselves a light here. And if we begin to look, all these swirls and scratches are into the paint, which is a whole nother process because we want this car to look as good as it can. So we're gonna clay it first, then we're gonna dress those swirls, and then we'll get into polishing and waxing. Okay. That's not a big deal, pretty easy to do, but I always wanna know what you're working on beforehand because not every car is like this you know in some cases you don't need to clay a car in some cases you don't need to remove swirls or oxidation every car is a little bit different yeah i'm sure those of you that have seen this car in person definitely know what the paint looks like and i guess you can see right here too this is about to make a night and day difference i'm so excited for this um clay is really easy a lot of people and and we hear a lot of times that clay can take a long time and it's, it's really hard to do, but it, it really isn't. No matter what brand you use, you got a lubricant, you got a clay, and you literally come in here, get all the loose contaminants off, and that's what we did by wiping. And then you lay down a little bit of a lubrication layer and just take that clay and literally just start working that paint. Now, you don't need to push hard, you don't need to work too hard, but what's interesting, the more you do this, and if we flip this clay over, depending on what's on there, you can actually oh, wow. see. That looks like a lot of black overspray <laughs> from something. Could have been sitting in a shop somewhere, somebody else painting, doing brake work, whatever. That's so let's hit this entire yeah. car real quick. So the, the cool thing about everything that we're doing today, you can do this in your home garage, and that's something that not a lot of people think, not a lot of people know, is that all of this, all of this stuff is fairly easy to do in your own garage. So if you're looking to do any of this stuff, the wires, of course, here's all the products that you will need. So run your hand back and forth across. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Oh, this is like noticeable. That's insane. And what's it, besides the feel-good factor that it's smooth, because everybody yeah. loves that, it actually plays an important role because with all that um, almost barrier coat in there, yeah. paint or overspray, your polishes, your waxes, all that other stuff doesn't work as good because you're kind of fighting right. to get through all this stuff that's on top of the paint. So you can't really massage or protect or condition the paint good mm -hmm. until you get that, we call them bonded contaminants that are just stuck. Windshields, headlights, glass. I guarantee that oversprays on all these windows too. Yeah. Oh, and we're gonna clay sure. those. Test on the hood because it has some combination of water spots, mm -hmm. swirls, looks like it's got some rotary marks in it. Yeah. So we kind of want to determine, I guess, the system we want to replicate over the rest of the car. Because the last thing you want to do is assume product X works, right. do the whole car, then go, oh, that was oh, the it doesn't work. Product. A simple little test here. Choose 
And assuming you said you want great results, so it's okay to do multi-step. Right. The cool thing about once it looks good, it's easy to maintain that, mm -hmm. and you may not ever have to do those multiple steps again. So we're gonna grab our MT300 dual action polisher. And the reason we're grabbing this is it has a little bit more bite to it. Mm -hmm. It's gonna get the job quicker and actually deliver better results. I mean, between Tony, you and me, I mean, we could do it by hand, but it would take a long time. So we're yeah. just gonna go to the trusty dual action polisher. Not gonna swirl, not gonna burn, and it's gonna be our best friend. So let's do some testing Let's over do here. It. So we just finished up with the clay bar. This is already a huge difference with how smooth the paint is now, or at least how it looks. Like I said, this paint's really, really bad. So let's go ahead and start using that polish like he said, and let's get this thing going. <laughs> this is this is actually like, this just blew my mind. From what we started with to what we are about to do. <laughs> you can see like the direct line. So we just gave it a little polish on this side just to kind of test it out and then taped it off to where you can see the edge and that's like perfectly defined. That just <laughs> blew my mind. Well, time to get to work now. I know. <laughs> that was our brand new 110 Ultra Pro Speed Compound that we just launched at 2018 SEMA. Perfect. So now that we know that it's perfect and that it works, we're gonna go ahead and start doing the entire car and making this thing like pretty much brand new. So we just got finished with the hood and the fender and pretty much this side. We're working on towards the back, but difference that that just made, it's like, so we did both of these, but the difference from when we started, it's absolutely crazy. I am so happy. Wow. It's like a new car. And now once all of that residue is off of like all the gunk and stuff is off, there's actually a crazy sparkle that this black paint has that you couldn't really see before we started buffing and everything. I don't know if you can see on camera, but it's so nice. And it's cool because it's a factory color, so it does have that factory sparkle in it. Oh, that sparkle, there it is. Oh yeah. All the sparkle. That's what I'm talking about. Yes. got done using the compound, which is the 110, correct? That's correct, that's what removed all the defects. Now moving on to the polish, which is the 210. That's like the haziness, pops color, stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely, you nail it perfect. We call it a polish, it's gonna take, if there's any haze, 110's real good at not leaving any haze, but if there's any slight haze and we really want that metallic to pop on this, that's where 210 comes into play perfect. before we go to any wax, cool. okay? Yeah, the car looks awesome with just the compound, so to see this thing with the polish, gonna be good, boys. So just put a layer of polish on the hood right now. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe this off. Oh. oh. Nice. That is perfect. Oh, just a, a nice mirror right here. All right, the polish came out perfect. And we're not even done yet. We still have another step. <laughs> this is all that, about protection. How could it get step. any better? Uh, well, it actually is probably as good as it's gonna get from a gloss. The wax on may maybe a little bit better. We chose our synthetic ultimate wax because that's synthetic, better quality, better longevity. So that's what's gonna keep all this looking good. Kind of slow down mother nature, keep mother, mother nature away and give you that protection so when you're driving it, you get a bird dropping, you get caught in rain, it'll give you a chance to pull out the quick detail of right. it and, and wipe all that off. So. Let's get to it. Let's do it. Wax is up next. Remember we did compound, polish, and now thirdly, the wax. Okay, so for the final step, before for the, we're all done, 
We're gonna grab it looks good. ultimate liquid wax and it's time for protection. And the really key to using wax is most people use way too much. More wax is not better. It, it makes more work to wipe it off and you kind of get frustrated. So what we're looking for, I don't know if you can even capture this on camera. We use our finishing pad and our DA. And there's such a light film on here. Very light film is all you need because that's gonna make wipe off incredibly easy and you're having the same amount of protection that's left behind. So why make more work for yourself? Let's do it. Eventually. I am honestly speechless. My mind has been blown. This is better than what I could have imagined. It's actually a mirror. It looks so good. Thank you so much, Mike. You bet, man. Anytime. Wow. So this is the finished product now. We went and did the wax. We kind of got the little details, the wheels, interior door jams, the lights. The car looks incredible. The paint restoration came out amazing. This was actually worked very well. This paint, we call it responded quite nicely. Combination of our new 110, 210, the machine, but the paint really liked that combination. So it responded and all those marks came out real easy. Yeah. Some cars, you may have to work a little bit longer, couple more passes, patience, patience, and patience, right. and it will definitely pay off as this one did so, but this was very kind to us. <laughs> it looks amazing from the wheels, body, to the interior, it came out amazing. I'm really excited for us to actually like drive it out of here and see it in the sunlight. Wow. That's the ultimate reveal. Lunch first, lunch first, then we do the ultimate reveal. Yeah. And pull it outside. What better way to end a detailing <laughs> session than Chipotle and Jim Conatan? Ready? Ready to pull it out? Let's do the reveal. I think so. Out. Let's see what it looks oh, like. Let's do it. Here it is, finally all done. It really is a complete night and day difference. Oh my gosh. In the sun, you can actually see all the sparkles now. Wow. It looks incredible. Let's go home. Finally just finished the video. I didn't want to leave you guys hanging with no outro again because I always forget to film outro. So uh, I'm actually back home at my parents' house in Mississippi. So I'll explain more of that in the next video that you guys see, but it's literally 3.30 in the morning right now. So I'm absolutely exhausted from traveling all day and editing this video. So I'm just gonna go ahead and end it here. Um, huge thank you to Meguiar's for helping me fully restore the paint of this GTR. It came out amazing and I wish you could all see it in person because it does make the biggest difference. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Get excited because we start the Turbo BRZ in the next episode. So be sure to watch that one on Sunday. Once again, thank you guys. I'll see you in the next one.